Turn to your neighbor and say, you ready? ready. It's training for raining. (laughs) Oh, glory. This is the night the Lord has made. And we will rejoice in it and be glad. Because we have a a choice. Yes. Everybody has a choice, don't we? Everyone say, I choose. choose. And turn to your neighbor and say, bless you. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. (laughs) Glory. James chapter 1. Hallelujah. (laughs) Yes, yes, and yes. In James chapter 1 and verse 2. Praise God. Is everybody there? Are you ready? Let's read it. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. It doesn't say, again, this is pretty wild. It says, when you fall into various trials. I'm going to share something that's kind of wild in the arena of this because it says, count it all joy, right? You know what really causes us to fall into various trials? Pride. When you see the word fall, it's usually connected to pride. So he says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Why? The only thing that's going to get you out is what? Joy. Why? That's going to change everything, isn't it? Does everybody understand this? The word says, cast your cares on the Lord because he cares for you, right? So when you fall into various trials, the majority of the time we fall into various trials is because we've agreed with pride. And, you know, we want to blame the whole circumstance on something. Well, this happened, this happened, that happened, he did this, she did that, whatever, it doesn't matter. The word tells us very something specific Amen? In Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. So when you fall into various trials, you're to count it joy because it's the only way out. Well, it doesn't feel like it's not too too bad. Die and start laughing. (laughs) See, the reason why people stay in it is because they're still fighting for their life. They're so caught up in themselves. In verse 18, chapter 16, verse 18, what does it say? Pride goes before destruction. Amen? Pride goes before destruction at a haughty spirit before a what? Fall. So when you fall into various trials, why? Because of what? Pride. Now look at this. Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He who heeds the word wisely will find good. And whoever trusts in the Lord, happy Is he the wise in heart will be called prudent and sweetness of the lips increases learning. Learning so pride goes before a fall pride will cause the fall and drift. To the fall. 
Listen, one of the things that's connected with pride and, and what, what is carnal wisdom. Because pride contaminates wisdom. Everybody with me? In other words, it promotes ungodly wisdom, not godly wisdom. So we fall in a place where we say, I'm okay. I'm okay. I can do it. I don't need any help. None of us has made it. Amen? None of us has made it. You know, for such a long time, I was in such denial as an addict. You know, I only use every day. <laughs> but I'm not an addict. No, I really use on the weekends. During the week, I just sustain my addiction. You're an addict. No, I'm not, man. I can quit any time. <laughs> yeah, but I can just throw the stuff away and kill somebody. No. I was in denial for such a long time. I was bound by demons. And pride will always keep you in a state of denial. It always keeps you in a state of denial because you're still protecting who? Yourself. Pride is a protector of self, and self is the offspring of darkness. Isaiah 14. In fact, when you deny something, you actually lie. Ooh. So lying is a protector, isn't it? Amen. Then when people get caught in a lie, they get angry. Because <laughs> that's also a protector of self. Oh, man, what do you mean? I lie. You lying thief. <laughs> Does everybody understand this? All of this is associated with the major stronghold, the strong man of pride. Personal reverence to a deadly end. And Isaiah 14... Is everybody there? We're going to start at verse 12. It says, come on, are you ready for this? How you have what? Fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. That's one eye. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, two eyes. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the far the side of the north, three eyes. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high God. When we, pride will always promote self to be self-God. I'm better. Hello? Hello? And this is what the Lord says. Well, you, <laughs> you go on to hell, brother. Yet you shall be brought down to hell, Sheol, the lowest depths of the pit. So, in this, Lucifer, how you have fallen because of your pride. Amen? Then he went to self-exaltation of I will. I will. He is the fall of pride that entered the earth. Is everybody with me? He is the fall of pride. And that's the name of tonight's teaching, the fall of pride. He entered the earth. So pride didn't enter the earth until he brought it. Because he is the fall of pride. So pride is a spirit. And it originated from a person, a powerful angel called Lucifer. So when Lucifer began to exalt himself, the Lord removed him, didn't he? He kicked him out of the throne. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28.
Praise God. The fall of pride. In verse 12. It says, Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, Thus says the Lord God. Now we know he's talking about Lucifer. You are the seal of perfection, right? Full of what? Wisdom and perfect in beauty. Everyone say wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, braille, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you, create, you were created. You were, on, you were the anointed cherub who what? Covers, he covers the praise and worship leader of the universe. I establish you. You are on the holy mountain of God, which is known as the earth. You walk back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within. You sinned, and therefore I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Verse 17, look at this. Your heart was what? Lifted up because of your what? Your beauty. He exalted himself. He believed he was above others and worthy of all praise. He wanted to be like the most high God. It says, you corrupted your what? Your what? Wisdom. Pride will corrupt. It contaminates wisdom every time. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that you might gaze at, that they may gaze at you. Again, he was perfect in beauty and full of wisdom. He, ex he was exalted. He, he exalted his beauty with pride and contaminated his wisdom with selfishness. Again, pride always distorts wisdom. Always. What is wisdom? That's what assists your decision making. It tells you what to do. So when somebody is full of pride, they can't make correct decisions. I'm talking about godly decisions. They make more worldly decisions than they do godly. Is everybody okay? In Luke chapter 10, the fall of pride. So we see the originator of pride. Luke chapter 10. In verse 16. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. Luke chapter 10, verse 16. He who what? Hears you, hears me. He who rejects you, rejects me. And he who rejects me, rejects him who sent me. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan what? Fall like lightning from heaven. The pride of fall. I mean, the fall of pride. Behold, I give you what? Authority to trample on the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Rejoice because your names are written where? In the book of life. Don't let pride puff you up because you cast out devils. Because you have dominion over the power of the enemy. Do not let pride deceive you. Because many people walk in pride and arrogance because of dominion. We should be walking in humbleness because we know who we are. We don't have to prove anything to anyone. Amen? In Proverbs 8,
the fall of pride. Pride will cause us to fall if we let it. Proverbs chapter 8. <clears throat> Hallelujah. In verse 12. Now where there's pride, when, when pride comes, it, what does it do? It corrupts or contaminates wisdom. So let's hear what wisdom has to say. In verse 12. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to what? Hate evil. Pride and arrogance and the evil way. And the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reigns and rulers decree justice. By me princes rules and nobles. All judges of the earth. I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, and fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of justice, that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasures. Pride rejects wisdom from above and welcomes ungodly counsel nullifying the fear of the Lord. I'm going to say this again. It rejects the wisdom from above. Does everybody get it? It rejects it. If you've ever gotten, talked to somebody and they're full of pride, they don't, they reject it. They step away from, amen? They step away from the godly counsel. They step away and reject the wisdom from above. And they welcome ungodly counsel, which nullifies. When you accept ungodly counsel, it nullifies the fear of the Lord. That's when it, why? Does ungodly counsel come from God? No. So then there's no reverence to God. So a person just thinks, well, I'm just going to do anything. I can say anything. I can live the way I want. This is my life. God gave it to me. No, God. What did he do? He exchanged his life. God gave me and you his life. And you can't have his life without giving yours. Because our life leads us to the depths of hell. His life brings us home. Is everybody okay? Proverbs 13. Again, pride always blames everything else and doesn't take responsibility. Proverbs 13 and verse 10. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. By pride comes nothing but what? Strife. By pride comes nothing but strife. But with the well advised is what? Wisdom. Wisdom. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished, but he who gathers by labor will increase. Yes. So, let's continue a little bit on this here. In verse 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a what? Tree of life. He who despises the word will be destroyed. Wow. He who despises the word of God will be what? Destroyed. And he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. The law of the wise is a foundation of life, is a fountain of life. To turn one away from the snares of what? Death. Pride will always promote strife and the fight for self. Pride promotes strife and the fight for self. It loves to provoke arguments. Does everybody get it? Why? Because it gets fed. Remember, spirits must get fed. So one of the things that pride loves to do is get an individual to begin to drift, doesn't it? Why? Because they're relying on themselves. I don't need this. I don't need, I don't need this. I, I, I can do this all by myself. 
I'm okay. I don't need any help. Pride. In Matthew 7. The fall of pride. Personal reverence into a deadly end. In verse 24. Matthew 7, verse 24. <clears throat> it's amazing how many times that when an individual is bound by pride and, and they're in denial and they lie, one of the things that they'll even say is they heard from God to justify their purpose. Well, God told me this. Oh, really? But you can tell by the fruit that it ain't God. You know that God doesn't interrupt himself. Amen. God does not promote lust. God does not promote sin. Amen. He doesn't promote lying, and he certainly doesn't promote addiction, does he? <laughs> he doesn't promote anything ungodly. But, I, I, man, I've heard it from many people. Oh, the Lord told me, uh, oh, really? Pride. Matthew seven twenty four. Let's speak it. Therefore, who what? Whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a what? A wise man who built his house on a rock. Why? Because if you're willing to hear, you're willing to believe, receive, and execute. You're willing to take what God says and put it into action. If you're not willing to hear, then you're prideful. Amen? And, you, and it says here, the, the Lord says, I reckon him to be a wise man. Well, then, if you're not willing to hear and you reject and that, and that wisdom becomes contaminated, we become stupid. Verse 25. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the what? Rock. So someone that is in the area of hearing, if he's hearing and executing, he's submitting. Has everybody got it? That's called humble. A person who's willing to submit to the things of God will nullify pride. See, that's what nullifies pride. is to turn from self-exaltation and protection of self and humble, submit Hallelujah. Verse 26. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be what? Like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended, the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its what? Fall. Pride goes before what? Fall. The fall of pride originated right in the throne room with Lucifer. Pride. I'm good. I'm a good person. I don't need I don't need any of this. I don't need to learn. I don't need to go to fellowship. I'm a good person. Cook. <laughs> First Corinthians ten. Glory. First Corinthians 10, start at verse 1. Let's read it together, please. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be what? Unaware that our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same spiritual food. And all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased, for their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And do not become idolaters as some were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drank and rose up to play. 
nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Why did they fall? Pride. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. So does somebody complain humble? No, what's the opposite of humble? Prideful. Now all these things happened to them as examples and they were written for our abomination. Uh, uh, admit admonition upon whom the ends of the ages has come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he what? Falls. Why didn't it? What do you mean? Huh? No. It's the fall of pride. It is the number one killer of mankind. Pride. Causes people to step in the traps. Causes people to do things they don't even want to do. Amen? Pride. We are, are always warned. God always warns us. And he's always preparing an escape for us. But if pride is there, it's contaminated wisdom. And we miss the voice of God. We miss the escape and we get misled instead of led. Pride. Pride likes to deafen us. Pride likes to... I'm telling you that deaf and dumb spirit will follow pride. And in this arena, God is trying to bring us so that we can be more sensitive to that area. When you want to argue about something, step back. Why do you want to argue? You just want to prove that you're right. Amen? Is that humble or pride? Now, we want to we wanna rescue people from going to hell, don't we? That's a little bit different. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 15. Pride thinks it can do whatever it wants and please God. Oh, the Lord knows my heart. The problem is that person isn't willing to look at it themselves. Actually, they really can't see it because they've been blinded to it now. One of the things that pride always does is push a person, pu push, pushes a person out of position into the feeling realm, into the soulish realm. It pushes them right out of the spirit realm into the soulish realm so that they're leaning more on how they feel than what truth is. Because the enemy knows that if he can get you out of the spirit into the soul, into that soulish arena, oh man, he can manipulate in such a wonderful way. First Samuel 15. Is everybody there? Verse 22. Let's speak it. So Samuel the prophet said to Saul, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices and obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. Verse 23, For rebellion is of the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, the Lord has also rejected you from being king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I what? Feared the people and obeyed their voice. Well, wait a minute. If pride was in there, he would have rejected what the people were saying. Does everybody understand that? But pride allowed fear to infiltrate and cause him to obey the voice of of the people and reject the voice of God. But remember, pride was behind it all. Amen? Now he said, then Now therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you for you have rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. 
Now, something happens here. Because he told Saul that he was going to be replaced. So Samuel goes out and he finds David. And he goes to anoint David. Now watch this, verse 14 in chapter 6. I mean, verse 16, chapter 4. Uh, chapter 16, verse 14. Did you get that? Okay. Just interpret it and go there. All right. 1 Samuel 16, verse 13. <laughs> hey, listen. Let's get humble here. Verse 13, let's read it together. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose and went to Ramah. Verse 14, now everybody read this. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. I'm telling you, pride is torment. Where there's pride, there is torment. There is no rest. There's constant torment. There's always... You know, you, did you ever notice that torment is always questioning? What if, what if, what if, what how, how, how? When, 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 how, 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 who, 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 wah, wah, wah. That's called pride. Why? Because it's associated with torment. Everybody okay? Oh, yeah. Yes, rebellion and stubbornness is pride. It moves a person out of the spiritual position, grieving the Holy Spirit and opening the door to torment, fear, anger, anxiousness, and lust. I'm going to say that again so you write it down. Because paper don't forget. You ready? Rebellion and stubbornness is pride. Just comes in another form. It moves a person out of the spiritual position, grieving the Holy Spirit. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, he steps back. I can tell you that the first spirit usually shows up as a familiar spirit, trying to imitate the Holy Spirit, and he will promote pride. It opens the door to torment, fear, Anger, anxiousness. How many of y'all know what anxiousness is torment? And lust. Torment, fear, anger, anxiousness, and lust. Psalm chapter 1. Psalm 1. The fall of pride. In verse 1, let's speak it together. Blessed is the man who walks not in the what? Counsel of the ungodly. Hello. So is the counsel of ungodly rebellious? Amen. Is it prideful? Yes. Nor stands in the path of sinners. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So he says, blessed is the man who avoids these things. So the person that doesn't avoid these things is cursed. And it opens the door for more demonic activity. It's amazing how many people go get counsel from someone that's fallen. Duh. They're not living right. But they justify it. Because they've got itchy ears. They're looking for someone that's going to approve their pride. You know, associations bring impartations. Does everybody get it? You hang around with someone that's not right with God. You're going to get just like them. Go 
Why? Those serpents are going to bite you. The next thing you're going to find yourself is compromising. How many of you know pride will compromise? Oh, yeah, you start to drift then. But I want to rescue this person. You can't. Only he can. We can't. He can. Give him a phone call. Tell him to repent and try again. You know, here it is. Get, in, get right with God. Get into service. Get in fellowship. Get in the word. Learn or burn. I don't want it. I can do it myself. See ya. Go ahead, cook by yourself. You and I, I ain't cooking with you. <laughs> Praise God. It says this, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. It's in truth. His delight is in truth. Man, we should love truth and hate deception. We should hate lies. We should hate lust. We should hate evil. If you don't, then you're full of pride. Okay. His delight is in the law of truth of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. In other words, he's always, let me see, I'm comparing truth with this. I'm, I'm, is this, why? Because our heart is set to please God in everything we do. Everything we do is our heart is set to please God. If it's not set to please God, then we're bound by pride. He shall be like a what? Verse 3, like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? It's going to prosper. It's going to turn to the good. Why? Because he's planted. Do you know planted uh, uh, near the, the water is associated with fellowship? He's connected. They're connected not only in fellowship, but they're connected with the Lord. They abide. See, pride always tries to get people to run. It always wants to interrupt God, the runners, because they're cowards. Pride promotes fear. In verse 4, it says, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives around. Therefore, the ungodly should not stand in the judgment. That means reward. They won't stand in the reward of the Lord nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. Shall perish. Pride of ungodly counsel. Pride's perception will cause division. Because where there's pride, in other words, pride promotes a flawed belief system, doesn't it? So where there's a flawed belief system, there's a flawed perception of things. And it causes division, strife, and the fight for the wrong thing all the time. Again, people get counsel from the unsent, the ungodly. Second, Second Thessalonians chapter 2. So when you see the word fall, you can be pretty much guaranteed it's connected to pride. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's read the first four verses here. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by Spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the what? Falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Why? Pride is going to increase tremendously. It's increasing now. Who oppose, now look at this. It says, the falling away will come first. The man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that he is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, but he's not really God. He's Antichrist. Amen? 
Again, you've got all of this new uh, fame out there of I, God, me, myself, and I. Oh, we're God. You've got new age movements that call themselves gods. They're full of pride. There is no humbleness. There's not submission to what is truth and righteousness. The falling away. And we're seeing it increase more and more. And why is there more falling away? Because more pride is being released. 1 Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter three. In verse one, it says, this is a faithful saying. If a man desires the position of a bishop, a bishop here is considered to be an overseer or someone in authority in the kingdom. He says he desires a good thing. It's a good thing. We should all be wanting to be officers in the body of Christ. That's what we're doing. We're training up officers. Amen. But he should be uh, must be blameless. A husband of one wife. That's good. Temperate, sober-minded, good behavior, hospital, able to teach, not given to wine, drugs, or crazy music, not violent nor greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetousness, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being puffed up with what? Pride he what? fall into the same condemnation as the, the devil. In this, there is a period of time because God is training up leaders. And in this leadership, there must be submission in every area. It is a good desire to be a leader, but we must be sent. God wants to send us when we are sent, there's covering the I'm okay, I'm good, I can do it better, and all of this other stuff. I get people that come to see me all the time and try to tell me what I'm supposed to do with our discipleship uh, program. I, I listen to them. I, you know, if there's something, uh, something worthwhile, um, usually I tell them they need to get it in themselves. But you need to go through it yourself. You're full of pride. Anyways. You know, everybody wants to do something better. And uh, uh, again, they fall into this arena of uh, uh, pride is ar argumentative and pride will also blind. Amen. We must maintain an area of a humble spirit where we're willing to submit. We're willing to receive. You know, even a child trusts. You know, the Bible says that we should be childlike trusting and so forth and willing to receive and, and move when, when God asks us to move. 2 Timothy chapter 3. One of the things is willing to learn. That's a child. A child's always willing to learn. They want to learn, man. In other words, we should always want that area because we're thirsty and hungry for more. Well, pride will nullify that. Pride says, I got enough, I'm good. When that comes, those are warning signs. I've got enough, I'm good. I don't need to do, I don't, no. I'm telling you, and the voice of the stranger will come and speak to you that way. I've got enough, I'm good. I don't need to hear, I don't need, to. hello? Those are warning signs. In verse 1, Chapter 3, let's speak it together. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of what? Themselves. You think that's pride? Yeah. How about lovers of money? Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Un disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Unloving. Unforgiving. Slanders without self-control. Brutal despisers of good. Traitors. Headstrong. Haughty. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And they have a form of godliness but they're full of stinking pride. But they'll deny the power. Why? They're denying the power. Why? Because they're not walking in dominion. They're not walking in the power of Christ to overcome temptation. They're easily swayed. Easily swayed. See, one of the things that begins to happen in that, the person loses their first love, their first call, their first purpose. And they're easily swayed. It says, from some people, what? Turn away. 
Why? Because those are the sorts that creep in the households, ministries, and so forth, and, and take captive individuals and load them down with various sins and lusts and all kinds of things. These people are always learning, but they're never able to come to the knowledge of the truth that sets them free because they're full of pride. They listen, 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 but don't hear. Why? Because if you truly hear, you believe you receive and you execute. In other words, you put it to practice. Pride will prevent you from putting it into practice. Is everybody okay? Always learning, but they can never come to humbleness. James 4. Pride is a taker of life and a promoter of death. Pride is a taker of life and a promoter of death. Now, he doesn't come to you and say, hi, I'm going to take your life today. Hello? He's, the word says that the serpent is the most cunning beast created. He comes in, that it's like a drip of water that you don't even hear dripping. That's why the word says, make no place for the devil. And James chapter 4 and verse 6, is everyone there? All right, let's speak it together, please. But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore what? Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will what? Flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your, heart, your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will what? He will lift you up. In other words, humble means submit to God and authority. Sub, a submissive spirit is willing to learn, willing to wait, Willing to trust and willing to obey. I'm going to say that again. A submissive, is, a submissive spirit is willing to learn, willing to wait, willing to trust, and willing to obey. So a submissive spirit is a humble spirit. It is the only way to break pride to maintain a humble spirit. You, you, we, you can cast it out. You can do everything. But until you become humble is what breaks it. Is everybody okay? First Peter chapter... F uh, we went there, I think. First Peter chapter 5, we go there. we go there now. First Peter chapter 5. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Know that the enemy is unleashing. The word says in the latter days that good will be called evil and evil will be called good. Why? Because of pride. There is a falling away. Many people are falling from faith. People are falling out of fellowship. They're falling out of all of these things. They're getting caught up in the world. They want to be famous. We already are. In the eyes of God, we're already are. We don't have to prove nothing. Amen. First Peter chapter 5, 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility, come on, speak it with me. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting your care upon him, for he cares for you. Here we go again. Are you ready? Be sober, which means what? Alert. Be vigilant, which means what? Consistent. Now, you can't be consistent without discipline. And you might, that means that you've got to maintain humility because pride will reject discipline and consistency. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a 
roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Why? Because he knows he, he has you pinned with pride. Pride always sticks out. It's like a beacon. Beep, beep, beep on the sonar, radar. Beep, beep, beep. There's a... And they follow you, man. They got you. Got you tagged. See, the only way that you can get untagged is the cloak of humility, which what? Causes you to be invisible. You're invisible on the radar. But as soon as they can get you to uncloak yourself, there they are. Yes. Then fear, anxiety, stress, torment, anger, frustration, everything comes. It's the attack of the voices. Everybody wants to get fed. Psalm 15. We'll close here. <laughs> the fall of pride. Glory. Psalm 15, let's speak it all. You ready? We're going to sow this one. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle and who may dwell in your holy hill, he who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart, he who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is what? Despised. In other words, he hates wickedness. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved out of position. Amen? It's the fall of pride that originated with Lucifer. Remember, pride will contam contaminate wisdom. Amen? And when, we, when, when wrong decisions are made, it's because it's been influenced by what? Pride that's contaminated Wisdom. Because wisdom tells you what to do. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I apply the blood of Jesus in every seed that's been imparted here tonight. And I ask, Lord, that that seed will grow and bear fruit for your glory. And that the cloak of humility will be placed upon each and every one because you desire a humble spirit, a humble heart, a contrite spirit, Lord. One who's quick to repent and turn away from wickedness. One that can recognize when they become prideful. So Lord, help us to set boundaries that we know we're stepping over those areas. Let the alarms go off so that we know when we're stepping into pride or agreeing with it that we may step back and humble ourselves to you and not allow pride to make our decisions. So we thank you for your word tonight. We honor and bless your holy name and your word. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed.